Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. I'm Chris Horner. This is stage six, Tour de Suisse 2022. Now, 180 kilometers and two big, massive climbs in today's stage. We're talking about 18 kilometers at the finish of the stage at just over 7%. It's a smooth climb up to the summit finish here of today's stage. And then the last one kilometer is going to flatten out just a little bit. Not flat, falls flat, I'd say, to the finish. And a little bit tricky at the finish line. But they got to get over a big mammoth climb to begin with in the middle of the stage. And then it's going to drop down through a valley and then back up to the finish like I talked about. Now, today's stage, it was hit hard from COVID. 26 riders disappeared. And along with Yumbo Visma's departure from yesterday's race of stage five, you're going to get Bahrain victorious, UAE Team Emirates, and Alpacine Phoenix are going to leave. That's four complete teams out of the Tour of Swiss. And we're going to start this stage six with just over 90 riders. Now, a lot of time the riders were asked throughout the stage here in their interviews about what they thought about continuing the stage. And of course, Garrett Thomas and Nielsen Palace from EF Education both agreed that the race should continue. It's the organizers that will decide and the big bosses that will decide when it's time to leave the race. Now, when the race starts proper, in the yellow jersey is going to be Jakob Fogelsang from Israel Premier Tech, and he's got a small, small lead over Garrett Thomas of one second for the general classification. When you're looking at Israel Premier Tech, they're down two riders. They only have five riders in the race. Like I said, four teams are completely missing. When you look at EF Education, they only have two riders in the, in the race continuum, but still in the top 10 on the general classification. It'll be Nielsen Palace from EF Education, and he's got one teammate, Jonas Ruch, there for him. So this is a big, big stage here for Palace, who's riding high on the general classification here at Tour Swiss. And in his interview before the race began, he says he's feeling good. He's trained specifically here for Tour of Swiss. So he wants to start the race and he's looking solid in the front group when the cameras come on. Now up front in the breakaway, we got 11 riders with over six and a half minute gap on the Israel Premier Tech led peloton behind. Up front in that group is going to be a couple sprinters. Pasqualon from Intermarche is up there. And Michael Matthews from Bike Exchange, he's representing up there. And he's going to go for a couple of the sprint points along the way through the valley between the two monstrous climbs here to get himself into the sprint leader's jersey at the end of today's stage. Behind going up the climb with 85 kilometers still to go in today's stage, Astana will hop on the front because the time gap started to get to about seven and a half minutes. Astana starts drilling it, and then we start seeing riders come out the back in big numbers back there with the speed of Astana on the front. Problem for Israel Premier Tech, Patrick Bevins, one of those riders. That'll bring Jakob Fogelsing's team down to four on today's stage when they go up over the top of the climb. Going down the descent, Israel Premier Tech gets on the front with Daryl Empey, winner here of stage four of Tour de Suisse, and he's riding hard up there. Now remember, when you're listening to the commentators here during the race, they're doing a good job and they're telling you that with only Masnada in that front group from Quick Step at over nine minutes down on general classification, they are right in saying that there's not a whole lot of time to panic here. You don't need to panic, more specifically, for Israel Premier Tech because the gap is down to about six and a half minutes. But there's 11 guys up there. It's six and a half minutes, and you got one Daryl Empey pulling right back there. Now we're going to see Jakob Folsen go back and do a little bit chatting again with his old teammates from Astana. And magically enough, one more Astana rider hops on the front. So you got two guys being able to set tempo back there. Up front in the breakaway through this valley, with the exception of those two sprints that Michael Matthews took both maximum points on, this group of 11 gelled together perfectly throughout this whole stage. Now I want to point one thing out when we back it all the way back up to 85 kilometers to go and they're going up over just before the KOM here, the first KOM here on stage six, that this group was smart and intelligent. They never picked up the pace too much on that first climb and they kept this group of 11 together so that they can all work through these long valleys. This is a quite a stage, a lot like the Tour de France stages in terms of they go up over the climbs and then they have long descents and long valleys. So you need maximum numbers up there. You don't want to get carried away if you're back there with 85 kilometers to go and you're one of the better climbers like Masnada from Quick Step or Quinn Simmons from Trek Segafredo. You don't want to light this race up that early here in today's big mountain stage of Tour de Suisse. Now, when they drop down, like I said, everybody works smooth together with about 18 kilometers to go. They're going to pass through a tunnel there, and this is going to be the last time when the peloton back there is going to get any kind of 
coolness as they go through the tunnel because today's stage was hot and heavy when it comes to the temperatures on today's stage and the fighting that's going to happen in that front group of 11 when they hit this final last climb starting with just under 18 kilometers to go now right away when the camera leaves the peloton from behind we're going to go up front it's going to be nico deans that's throwing in an attack from dsm he's throwing an attack hard and right there you see the one sprinter still left here in the front group it's pasqualon from intermarche he's trying to get a little bit of a gap now if we back up the film a lot there was an interview in the earlier stages where Pasqualon had talked about trying to lose some weight so that he can climb a little bit better he didn't lose enough because he's going to come out of that group pretty fast afterwards when it's quick steps Mas Nada that starts setting the pace on the front now there's three riders up front with Mas Nada Nico Dins holding on for dear life and watering himself down left and right throughout this climb Quinn Simmons from Trek Segafredo's latched, latched on but let me tell you at the beginning of the climb I saw Quinn Simmons with a water bottle in his bike and then throughout the rest of the part of the climb all the way until about the last three kilometers to go. I never saw Quinn Simmons with a bottle. I did see Nico Dins many times getting water from the vehicles behind and dousing himself with water to keep him cooled off and all the time basically going up this final climb. masnada has got at least two water bottles on his bike. Quinn Simmons starts to suffer and he gets popped out the back. Now there's two riders behind Quinn Simmons and it's Kofidis Harada along with AG2R's Clement. Those two riders will pass Quinn Simmons as Quinn Simmons still doesn't have any water on his bike going up this final climb here on stage six. Up front, we see Masnada. He's starting to get angry up here with Nico Dins, who's riding this race incredibly intelligent. Remember, he was the first attack trying to get a gap because he's not a pure climber. Now he's sitting on Masnada's wheel from Quick Step with Masnada just getting angry with him. And finally, we're going to see the DSM rider Nico Dins take a pull only for about 100 meters, 200 meters tops. And then it's Masnada back on the front. Those two will stay together, locked together, because Nico Dins is just not leaving the quick step rider's wheel. Again, always cooling himself off, always drinking properly, going up this final climb. Masnada can't get rid of him. They start playing some games. Behind with just under four kilometers to go, Harada and Clement from AG2R, they bridge up to the two riders in front. Quentin Simmons is still dangling back there. Uh, earlier when we backed the film up on the climb, the Peloton was being led by Team Enios on the front. Israel Premier Tech had then spent some time on the front too. And it was Max Schockman from Bora Hansgrohe that threw in a big tech. Bora Hansgrohe started today's stage with just four riders, but three of them are high up on the general classification with Agita. Felix Grosschartner and Max Schockman. With Max Schockman's attack, it's going to be Fogelsang that throws in the next attack following Max Schockman. He latches on to Max Schockman. Now, when you look behind in the picture, Jonas Roche here, he's doing just a little bit of a no-no. He's trying to help out Palace, but you don't need to do this, Jonas. You just need to sit on. It's going to be Enios back there chasing with Martinez and Garrett Thomas latched onto the wheel. Up front, Fogelsang decides this is an opportunity to try to win Tour de Suisse, and he gets on the front and starts pulling hard with Max Schockman on his wheel. Only problem is Danny Martinez back there for Garrett Thomas doing a big pull on the front for Enios and he'll pull those two riders back. Jonas who did the no-no there doing the pull for EF Education he'll drop out of the picture but Palace from EF Education the American rider still hanging in strong. Now up front let's go back up to the front group that's now four riders up there as it's just about three kilometers to go Nico Dins goes to zip up his jersey he wants to be Arrow for the fifth finish of today's stage once he sits up on the seat seat and starts to zip it up guess what you got it it's quick steps Mas Nada that throws in a big attack when he looked back and saw that Nico Dins was trying to zip his jersey up he took advantage of it and lit this race up Nico Dins though has been racing perfectly and he'll pull back up to the two riders in front now they'll play a little bit of games and that'll allow Harada from Kofidis to get back on making four riders up front there's still one more good attack left though in Mas Nada's legs and it's again it's Clement trying to zip his jersey, and as soon as Masnata sees it, he throws in another big attack here trying to split this group of four up. He can't get the gap, and everything comes back together up front. With about one kilometer to go, all four guys are playing games. 500 meters to go. It's Masnata on the front, but games are still being played. 
400 meters to go. Guess what? Quinn Simmons, Trek Segafredo, he got a wa some more water after getting dropped with about 3K to go. I see seen the bottle on his bike finally. And Quinn Simmons is back in the picture at about 200 meters to go. We see Quinn Simmons taking the front as he's starting his jump for the line with 150 meters to go. Clemont from AG2R throws in his jump and he passes straight by Quinn Simmons. Only problem is DSM's Nico Denz is locked onto his wheel. When we come out of the right bend with 25 meters to go, they're side by side and then it's a bike throw at the line and you gotta wait. You gotta wait a long time. Nobody knows who won here on stage six. Nico Denz, I saw him pounding the handlebars, but that wasn't enough information there to tell me for sure if he wins. Now we'll go back. You gotta wait a little bit because those stragglers from the break, they've got dropped on this last mountain climb, are coming through one and two. And then we're going to see the peloton behind being led by Enos Garrett Thomas on the front as he's throwing in his uh, huge acceleration to the finish here with 150 meters to go. Now a gap opens up to Fuglesing and it looks like there could be a time difference. We could have a race leader's jersey switch here with 150 meters to go. Only problem is for Garrett Thomas up front, it's going to be a Gita from Bora Hansgrove that'll come around Fuglesing's wheel from Israel Premier Tech and close that gap to have G. Thomas finished in front, but not enough of a gap between Igita and Fuglesang to take the race leader's jersey here. Israel Premier Tech rode a pretty smart and intelligent race throughout today's stage, always doing just enough to get the job done. Fuglesang did try one time with Max Schuckman to try to get some more time on Garrett Thomas, which he's going to need if we get into the last stage here at Tour de Suisse with the time trial still left. Now, tomorrow's stage is epic, but before we get to tomorrow's, guess what? We got to go back up to the winner here on today's six, because after everyone finally finished, Max Schockman came in. So we are talking about minutes after the finish of the sprint here. We're going to find out is Nico Dance from DSM who won the bike throw at the line. There was never a time when he wasn't dousing himself to cool him off. He was never pulling if he didn't have to. He followed all the attacks from Masnada just perfectly and still had power left at the finish here to just throw his bike at the line to beat out Clement from AG2R. Third on the stage will be Harada from Kofidis to round out the podium. Now it was a strange stage when it started with the race organizer talking about how the show is going to continue unless we start losing more and more riders. Now I've been in races where we've started the next stage with only 51 riders way back in the 90s doing Trino Adriatico. The race organizer was upset with all of the racers who protested at the finish of the stage and the next day he only started 51 riders. With six more riders dropping out of today's stage six of Tour de Suisse, it's still on more than enough riders to have a competitive race here for the final last two stages of Tour de Suisse. Now keep in mind for Israel Premier Tech, this is important. This was Jakob Fogelsang's main objective here of the season was to come good here and I'm sure to be good at the Tour de France. And Israel Premier Tech need massive UCI points. They're way behind on the scale and those UCI points that here at Tour de Suisse that Jakob Fogelsang could get, even if he just finishes in a podium on the general classification, is worth a ton of points. But let's say he wins Tour de Suisse here. That can help Israel Premier Tech's battle of staying in the elite group of teams here at the European Pelican. All time. So, does should the race continue? Absolutely. When you start looking at the younger riders like EF Education Palace, who's riding magnificently here throughout Tour de Suisse and is high up on the general classification after this mountainous stage, you know EF Education with only two riders left in the race. You know they want to continue because there's only two more days left and EF Education need maximum points too in order to stay in that elite group of teams here at the World Tour. Now, make sure you guys like and subscribe. Two more big Big stages left, and you know we're going to see massive battles between Israel Premier Tech, Team Enos, and Bora Hansgrohe are going to battle it out on tomorrow's big mountain stages that are a little bit steeper than today's race. And then the individual time trial could be what decides who wins Tour de Suisse here in 2022. Make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll see you very soon on the next edition of the Butterfly Effect.